question one uh, they're, they're not fit for Sunday uh, both Robbie and uh, Nicole they're going to be per, both individual cases really Nicole probably going to be uh, a few weeks uh, Robbie it's day to day uh, he's, he's feeling a lot better uh, but, but we're going to uh, be really cautious with him uh, have his sign for for Fort Lauderdale yet he's, he's, he's done really well since he's come here so uh, we're really happy with that uh, what was the third one Michelle was that the actual Atlanta? game that the you're actual game. game sorry the there's game a game is there sorry yeah. <laughs> <that> game, yeah. <laughs> the game well I think it's going to be a really difficult game I think I think they're, they've invested really well in their team uh, obviously I know Gabby Hines are really well I know the types of teams that he likes to play and, and, and obviously coach and manage with real intensity uh, I think I think they've had a real tough schedule you know with the, the the Champions League fixtures they've had they've been on the road quite a bit uh, you know so I think I think that's why, why you're seeing the results that they're getting but every time I watch them play I think well they, they've got some really good players exciting players players that can cause you damage players that that, that can uh, really uh uh, you know, score goals and be exciting. So I think I think it's going to be a real, real tough game for us. To, you know, you think about the game against Philadelphia, which was one of the best teams in the league. I think Atlanta will be up there this year in terms of challenging. Uh, you know, to win to win the trophies and and to get the top honors. So uh, I expect a real difficult game for us. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, next, let's go to Tom Bogert and then to Franco Paniso. Tom, you're off mute. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, hi, Phil. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Um, you know, uh, continuing on, on what you alluded to there with, with Gabby, that you guys, I believe, spent just a season together at, at United. Um, I guess, what can you speak to on any sort of relationship there between the two of you? And, and you know, maybe harken back to, to that one year where you guys were together and what that was like. Well, I, I think I think you always say that the, the team mar man uh, mirrors the manager. And I think the year I spent at United with him, ferocious competitor, uh, every single day seemed like a cup final for, for Gabby in terms of his training style, his training performances, the way he played games, the way he approached games. He was fearless. You know, I think about the way that he used to play. He played left back a lot for, for Manchester United. The way that he used to always try and, you know, jump in front of defenders was was really aggressive player on the field. But he was like that in training. He was, an, he was you know, everything. He, he left nothing nothing at the end of every training session at the end of every game there was nothing left in the tank for him to give so that was the most impressive thing his winning mentality i thought was the one that struck out more than anything and and ultimately that's that's what you would see in his in his team so uh you know he was he was he was a good good teammate where didn't speak much english at the time i've got to say but immersed himself into the club and uh w was a valuable member of the team and uh you know it was he, he was a, he was a good he was a good uh good good f not good friend but is a good good companion in the team to have thank you tom franco you're off mute thank you jackie hey phil Hi. Uh, just, just wanted to ask you about two uh other players really quickly um julian carranza we saw him do some individual work there off to the side today uh didn't see kelvin near them uh, out there as well so just the status on them if kelvin can't go um this weekend for whatever reason what what are your other options at right back because nico's gone and um, uh, Hul cool, Hulis had uh, vertigo, which which is a real, real. Uh, it's a tough one because you know you, you obviously get dizziness and uh, you know we're treating it like a concussion a little bit. You know in terms of symptoms, uh, he's still getting mild symptoms now. Uh, it stems, I think, from a from an ear infection. The medical team tells me so, uh, and we've not seen. Uh, you know, Huli had five, six, maybe seven days off after Philadelphia because he obviously picked up vertigo. And and anyone that I've spoke to that have uh, suffered from vertigo is is quite a quite a not I've got to say severe, but it's quite it's quite tough to 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 manage. So we're going to be really uh, cautious with Huli because, uh, like I say, that the, there's there's that motion. You think about football, about the twisting and turning. We're going to make sure that. Uh, he, he's 100% before coming back, but he's now just beginning to start doing some light training. But like I say, it's very light training. It, it's purely on his symptoms. It's purely on how he feels. And uh, you know, I think it could be a, a, a few weeks maybe uh, before before Hooli's back with us. And Kelvin. Kelvin, we, we expect to be fit for for Sunday. Uh, 
he, uh, he he just got a slight uh, slight niggle, and we're not going to take any precautions because we haven't got that much cover now that Nico's out at right back. Uh, we're not going to take any any risks with with Kelvin. Uh, we, we've tried other players in that position this morning, uh, and uh, you know we're happy with the choices that we've got. What what I always think is that when when you have you know, three or four injuries like we have, it's opportunities for other people to to stake their, their places in the team. And Federico, Victor Yajor, I thought was outstanding against Nashville. Jay Chapman, I thought, did really well. Uh, you know, it, it means that they've got a great opportunity. And Christian McCoon now is someone that over the next two or three weeks will get opportunities. And, he, and, and we've been really pleased with his progress. So it's now showing why we invested so much in, in the squad and uh, we've got to make sure that uh, everybody's ready to play. R risking, risking Jackie giving me the, the, the big eyes, just wanted to quickly ask you about the attack. You get, the defense has looked really well uh, for much of these three games. Um, I wanted to ask you how you get the attack going uh, going forward in this game against Atlanta United and in the games to come. seems like there's still something uh, that, that needs to have, get more out of the attack, especially with Gonzalo. You said you wanted to have him in the box more, but we've seen him drop um, quite often. I know he's back in training, so just... How do you get more out of this attack uh, on Sunday and going forward? Well, I, I think it was difficult against Nashville because of the lack of... We didn't have any forwards on the pitch, really. Uh, Centre-forwards, out-and-out centre-forwards. I think we scored four goals in the first two games. So I'd say, Franco, that in the first two games, the attack, the way that we transitioned, the way that we counter-attacked worked really well. So I just want to see a little bit more of that and better quality in the final thirds with, you know, when you have Carranza out, Robinson out, uh, Higuain out, you, you, you are going to suffer. But, you know, we created probably better chances in the first 10 minutes against Nashville than we had probably in the previous two games. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with it, with aspects of our attacking play. I do think we need to become a little bit more composed in the final third and keep possession better in the final third. But I think when, when we get everybody fit and firing, uh, and, and we get Rodolfo into areas where he can affect, then, uh, you know, it's not, it's not an area where I'm really concerned about. Thank you, Franco. And noted on the three questions for you and Michelle. Next up, we'll have Steve. Thanks, Jackie. Hi, Phil. Just, uh, just, just quickly going back to Harvey. I mean, you, you know how difficult it is for, for kids to leave Man United. It wasn't, I guess, not a decision you took lightly, but it says a lot that he wanted to come and, and play and, and have a different experience. It was his decision, yeah. Just like when every decision he's made, uh, every move he's made, it's, it's been his decision, and and you know he's he's had to take some brave moves in his his career. So, you know, he came out to do some training to see his dad. Uh, you know, really enjoyed it, impressed everybody. Uh, and I've got to say, it is it is quite difficult, you know, because obviously when he's in the club, he's just another player. So, I, you know, I've left I left a lot of the decision making on Harvey up to other people in and around the club, Chris and. Anthony Poulos has been took a real sort of like uh, you know uh, interest in him because I've I've said look you, you need to you need to be really honest here uh, I, I treat him I've got to say I, I'm harder on Harvey than, than any other player in the, in 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 the squad or in the team but ultimately he signed for the USL team uh, it's a great opportunity for him and uh, he's so excited to be out here in a new adventure for him I think I think the 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 proud bit for me as a father is that it is hard to leave Manchester United. Normally, when people leave Manchester United, there is a there is that almost death like feeling that your your dreams can't come true. But he's 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 probably known for three, four, five months that for him to succeed, he may have to leave because not everybody not everybody makes it at Manchester United. So he's he's quite level headed about that. Uh, but he also knows he's got a lot of hard work and a lot of development and 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 uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of days on the road with the USL team to uh, to keep improving. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next, we'll go to Kobe. Kobe, you're off mute. Thanks, Jackie. Hey, Phil. Hi, Kobe. I wanted to kind of follow up on Franco's questions from earlier with Gonzalo uh, dropping back. It, it, how, and it's almost like a two-part question. How important is it for the overall attack to get him involved touches-wise early? Uh, so he's less likely to drop back, so drop deeper. And how much, I guess, do you guys, you and Gonzalo have that conversation between, you know, maybe once you, you said it during the preseason, once you're a little higher, because that's where you're most lethal, that's where you're most dangerous for us. Well, I think, I think there's the balance there. I think we know that uh, for us to control games of football, you need your best players on the ball. And I think that's where Gonzalo comes into it in terms of his touch and his awareness and his passing range is, is as good as anything in this league. Uh, 
we also know that when he's in the box he's probably as good as anything in the league in terms of finishing ability so uh, I, ideally we need to get the balance right between when he does drop off like he did against Philadelphia uh, and, and when he plays a little bit higher like he did against uh, LA Galaxy I think that's the balance that we're striking I think it helps when you've got say Robbie and Lewis outside you it allows you to have real speed on the wings when we haven't got that maybe that, that Gonzalo plays a little bit higher but I've got to say that we, we had seven days without the Higuains last week. And when you take those players out the training performances or the training standards and the, and the game standards, you miss that kind of quality. And you don't realise how good a players that, that them two are. So I, I'm, I'm super pleased. I've literally just come out of a conversation with him for 20 minutes talking about football, talking about the team. He's, he's as motivated as, as what I've seen. Uh, a player motivated to want to do well uh, this season. I think he, he's got the bit between his eye. He knows what he has to do. And I think I think even in the first day of pre-season, the accountability that he said to the rest of the team, I need to do better, I will perform this year. And I think what we've seen already in two games that he's played, he's performed. And, uh, and we just need that for three games next week. And we need that for the rest of the season. Thank you, Kobe. We'll take two more questions. We'll go to Dairon and then end with Ronald. Dairon, you're off mute. Thank you, Jackie. So, uh, hi, Phil. Hi. I wanted to ask you another thing, but as uh, Jacqueline is going to block me, I'm going to be <laughs> more simple. And I'm just going to ask you for, uh, you mentioned Christian McCoon that he's going to have more opportunities during uh, these two weeks. Uh, I want you, if, if you could explain us a little bit more about him, how, uh, what have you seen uh, in him during these trainings and where do you consider him? And the last one is about a player, but uh, from the other team, the team that you are playing against this next uh, weekend, Joseph Martinez, the striker. He's uh, just recovering from a long injury last season, but he's been one of the most dominant players during the last, I don't know, three or four years in the MLS. And I wanted to uh, to know if you have him, have him in the considerations of uh, how to do something on him for this uh, game on Sunday. Thank you. Well, Christian, Christian is is a young centre back uh, who we've been working hard. He do, he probably does extra every single day of the week because we want to keep developing him. We, he's a good boy. He works hard. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. And and obviously with Nico out, uh, we've got we've got LGP. We've got Ryan as the centre back. He's thinking about the three game week next week. Christian will play some minutes next week without a shadow of a doubt. I think the strength. Uh, or his, his X factor is the fact that when you're a left-footed, left-footed, uh, left-centre-back, it gives you a real good option in terms of the build, the build phase, when you want to come out with the ball, when you're left-footed. I think that's where he will help the team immensely. But his concentration levels are getting better. His aggression in his defending, his communication, he's beginning to... Uh, become a little bit more vocal. That's what you know. Every every young player goes through that, where they're a little bit shy and they let they, they let the senior players dominate. We, we're asking more of him because we want to see his personality, and we're seeing that now more. And he, he's he's learning English better, so he can communicate with Leandro and with Ryan and with Nico. So uh, you know, we're really we're really pleased with him. And uh, I always think with with people like Christian who have been knocking on the door for so long there becomes a point when you've you've eventually got to put them in and trust them we could easily put Gregory back to centre back he's played there in the past and he's I'm sure could do a job there that that boy but you know my feeling is is that that's now feels like Christian's time to go in the team and see what you've got and see and see if you can deliver and and with young players you you never know the unknown is what's exciting the un, the unknown is what's scary for the player because you don't know how he's going to be but for me I have every faith in him and, uh, you know, just let, let's hope next week he, he gets his opportunity and, and he performs like he's been doing in training. Uh, good. And the second question, uh, thoughts on Joseph Martinez? Well, I think, obviously I know a lot about the boy. I've seen him in, in, in a lot. He's obviously got great quality. He's finding his way back to full fitness. Uh, Leandro knows a lot about him. Played with him. Uh, spoke, spoke to Leandro about him in midweek. Knows his qualities. And uh, we just we just hope he doesn't show those qualities on on Sunday. Thank you, Dairon. Last you. question, Ronald. Yes, I feel. Hi, Ronald. Yeah, uh, um, I feel I I want to to kill their own because I want to ask exactly about Joseph Martinez. So I don't want to be 
uh, I don't want to make the same question, but uh, thinking about the defense about Inter Miami in the last in the last game, how do you prepare them to face Joseph Martinez and entire Atlanta United? Well, I think I think I'd like to concentrate on ourselves really than than talk too much about the opposition. I think uh, I'm sure Gabby Gabby Einstein would be the same. I think you know there's 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 things that you just want to concentrate on and concentrating on how, how we play, how we're going to, uh, you know, defend, attack, get crosses in, try and win the game it is more important than concentrating too much on the opposition. Uh, yes, we do have a game plan. Yes, we do look at the opposition's strengths and weaknesses. We know that they've got many players. I think I think the boy in midfield, Sosa, I think he's going to be a top, top player. I've got to say, I think he's the one that's impressed me more than anything out of that Atlanta team. Plays with personality, plays with character. A uh, young boy that looks like he's the engine of their team. Uh, so you, if you was going to ask me about any players in their team, that I'd say Solskjaer is the one that at this moment in time is impressing me the most. But we know that they've got good, good, outstanding players in those in those top in in that top half of the field, uh, who we're going to have to defend well against, just like we did against Nashville, just like we did against Philadelphia. So uh, rather than than single out Martinez, who we know is a really good player, I'd say that we are concentrating on ourselves and concentrating on making sure that we're organised. To play against what I think is going to be one of the top teams in the uh, in the MLS. Phil, thank you so much for taking Thanks, time guys. with us.